Hey, this is Dwayne and, and Steve from Resurrection Auto. We are out here today in East Lake, Tampa, Florida. We are looking at his process of ceramic coating and we have a beautiful 66 Corvette out here. We're gonna talk to the owner about his car a little later, but we're out here today to kind of uh, talk about the process, the benefits of uh, ceramic coating and uh, see a little bit of the process here with Steve today. So uh, sit back, enjoy, we're gonna have a good time. Today we want to talk about ceramic coating, uh, the benefits of it. Um, Steve, if you could tell us a little bit of the history of uh, ceramic coating and how long you've been doing it, and, and uh, you know, we'll go from there. The benefits of ceramic coating, a lot of it. Think of it like a wax on steroids. Um, came out of Japan about seven, eight years ago. He was a Japanese chemist, and he married diamond dust with a solvent. We know diamond is the hardest thing in the world, but he balanced it out enough where you could spread the dust of a diamond on car paint. Then over time, it's in its third and fourth generation, and now it's, it, it's uh, becoming standard in the industry for protection, for resiliency from the sun, from scratches, abrasions. Again, wax on steroids, really hard, really easy to spread, but it's all in the paint preparation process is key for the ceramic to work properly. All right, so how long you've been doing this process? I've been doing about six, seven years. First year it came out, I was very skeptical, thought it was snake oil, didn't trust it, different type of process, different type of paint preparation, new types of buffers, compounds change, aluminum oxide was uh, developed and introduced in the compounding, so they call it the paint correction process which guys, I got no hair on my head, I'm 55 years old, it's a rub out, get over yourself, okay? The pads change, the equipment change, the chemicals change. So the paint preparation means everything when applying the ceramic itself. So Steve, if I got a classic car, what are the benefits for a ceramic coating for a classic? Zero maintenance. We're all getting older in age, you wanna get out there with the can of wax, you're on all these meds and you have a pacemaker, your wife's gonna find you dead on the other side of the car, <laughs> right? Let's prevent all that. Let's make it maintenance free. Let's make it to a point that it's a spray and wipe type of situation. You have an older vehicle with older paint. Our service, we restore it. So ceramic gives you a restoration type of approach that you couldn't get with the car wax. Car wax, three to six months, you keep reapplying, you keep getting frustrated. And in between that time, scratches, scuffs, things happen to the car, and you get really frustrated with that. Gotcha. This is what uh, ceramic prevents. Cool. So uh, how long does the, the, the ceramic coat last? Or do you, do you have to reapply it after a certain amount of time? Or um, Out there, usually, it's a five to seven year warranty on something like that. Mm -hmm. Some guys go that far out of 10. I think that's just nuts. Who knows what happens to the car in 120 months, man. You don't know, right? right. 10 years. So. Right. But it's, but it's that type of resiliency where when the ceramic goes on the vehicle, you just have that assurance for 60 to 72 months that any scratch or abrasion happens. It won't happen to the vehicle. Right. It's durable paint protection. Nice. So speaking of paint protection, so if you um, do the ceramic coat, um, are there benefits to doing it? Like, um, can you tell us like if somebody uh, maybe saved money from buying a paint job by, uh, you know, doing the ceramic coating instead. I think you mentioned something about that. And that's the key issue. When you have something that's 40, 50, 60 years old, <clears throat> excuse me, and and you get a quote for ten to $12,000 to paint a car, okay? Yeah. We don't care how good the car looks, the car's gotta run. You're taking all that money and all that investment and putting it everything mechanical. You gotta have some money for the presentation, the appearance of the vehicle. Right, right. So our service comes along and say, let's restore the paint without painting it. Take it to a paint shop, they're taking old mirrors off cars, tail lights, things of that nature right. that are brittle and old. It breaks. You know that headlight could be more, more than money. what the ceramic process more is money. in itself. Yeah. So I try to hit that sweet spot with our service to put ceramic on a vintage vehicle you can enjoy. Right, awesome. So Steve, 
I know you did some of the work already. Why don't you explain to us what you did, what's not done, and uh, kind of, you know, show us a little something about the detail. Well, the speed up time, I already embarked upon already starting the process. Uh, of course, wash, of course, a clay bar, a clay mitt, full machine rub out, ceramic base coat primer polish, and then the ceramic itself. Later on, I'll tell you why that ceramic primer polish is so important, okay? But the vehicle itself is pretty much done. This whole side has been done with the ceramic itself. The other side has been done. Basically, the whole car has been done except for the hood and part of the roof. How about that? Okay? Sounds good. Now we know we're in the shadows right now, that's fine because you can't be doing something out in the sun because it takes about a minimum of an hour to cure, but ideally five to six hours overnight to cure the ceramic itself. Gotcha. And that's what makes the difference. The curing time is very important. So this side's been done already, all this. Right, the whole side's been complete. The roof, the rear, and the whole entire side and I'm just saving half that roof and the rest of the hood uh, for more instruction and more information later for you guys. Cool. It's looking really good. I mean, we're out here in person. You guys can't see this, but man, this thing, you can see yourself in the, the reflection here. Uh, all right, Steve, so tell me a little something about the tools of the trade here. We have a Makita buffer, tool action buffer. Buffers changed about five, six years ago. Not only do they spin and they rotate, but they vibrate at the same time. That vibration and rotation creates heat, but it's coupled with this. When you have a compound like this, it's got aluminum oxide. This aluminum oxide heats up with the friction, the pressure, and the rotation of this buffer. You have to prep the paint by removing all the oxidation and scratches out of the paint. This is the only way that the ceramic gets applied properly, paint preparation. Gotcha. So Steve, tell me, you know, my first introduction to uh, ceramic was, uh, I won't say the brand, but one of my favorite brands of car products put out a ceramic wax. Right. So, I mean, what's the difference between that and, and your process? And why would I use your process as opposed to spending like 20 bucks in the, the auto parts store and, and, and using some ceramic stuff? No, go to the auto parts store. Go to all the you know, big box stores. Read the back of the bottle. $16 makes your problems go away. Really? Okay. <laughs> You're not saying on the back of that bottle about the paint preparation, the rub out, the ceramic primer polish. It's, how do I say this without offending anyone? But it's no good, okay? It's fast, it's quick, it's cheap. Meaning fast, it, 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 it ain't gonna come out. Fast, cheap, and good doesn't exist in my world, okay? Mm. So those products are just weak, watered down type of products to keep it simple in this conversation. That's, that's right. not gonna perform for you. And you're gonna be disappointed in two weeks to a month. It's gonna stop beating water. You have to prepare the paint. They're not telling you on the back of the bottle. You gotta know how to rub on a car. Gotcha. So you get what you pay for, right? Pretty much. Gotcha. That's what it is. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Appreciate that's that. what it is. So it, it, it's, it's finding someone that you become skilled, you get trained in how to do it the right way because on the back of that bottle, they're not telling you five to seven years, I can tell you that, Jack. They're not. <laughs> they're not. For the durability and the longevity of it, they're not. Yeah, understood. And it shows. It definitely shows. And, you know, when you got a car like this, you got to spend the money and get it done right. You, you took the time to locate the car. You took the time to drive out and find the car, meet the owner, negotiate price. And then you're going to put $17 bottle on it and walk away. Get away from me, will you please? <laughs> you took the time and effort to buy a classic. Treat it like a classic. Right. Give it the respect it has. Because God knows, you got your wife, your girlfriend screaming at you. How much we put money into this car? You see what I'm saying? Put gotcha. the money in the car and make it last. That's right. That's all I ask. Yep. That's why we exist. Good answer. I try to be. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell us like what product is there? A certain product you use, or or is there anything in the process that you want to talk about, or is it kind of proprietary and you don't want to give your secrets away? That's okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. In this type of business, getting the right product means everything. Okay, whether you're baking a cake, I don't care, repairing a car, whatever. This product right here is, is a compound that I use. It's got aluminum oxide in it. Mm -hmm. So I try to find a chemical that has aluminum oxide on it and water base. It means it's gonna have low dust. That's really important. So you don't wanna have a shop look like a coal miner, you know, a, a <laughs> coal mine, right? So this compound here, you put it on this rough compounding paint correction pad, they call it, a few drops like this, okay? This pad is rough in texture that rotates and creates friction and heat. 
This got the aluminum oxide that heats up. Then we apply this on the paint itself and we start moving the buffer back and forth. And that's how you start when you start paint correcting a vehicle. See the reflection of the roof of the gas station on there. I mean, the reflection is incredible. Uh -huh. Pretty tough. And it's just the paint correction compounding part, and it's going to come deeper after that. So that's that's step one. Pretty much after the wash and clay, we say. Then I go step one, cut. Step two, ceramic polish. Step three ceramic itself. Gotcha. Go ahead. Even if a car is repainted, you have to give it 30 to 45 days to paint correct it, to rub it out. Because the clear coat will pull. It's like saran wrap. It'll start pulling back. So after it gets done with the pulling back retraction process, you got to rub it out to smooth everything out. It's like your bed sheets, right? Mm -hmm. Put the sheet on, pull it, tuck it, this and that. That's what the paint is doing. The paint is tucking and pulling as it's curing. But you still have to rub out the vehicle, paint correct it, even after a, a, a paint, a repaint, or a car that could be 50 years old that's never been done. You gotta paint correct it. Gotcha. So as I always say, you gotta have money and patience when you're in this plastic car game, right? And Steve is explaining that this is a patience thing. This process takes about 10 to 15 hours to do. So it's not like, you know, it's actually like a two day process. It's not like you're gonna do this in, a, in an afternoon and be done. So, you know, you gotta have patience when you want this thing done right. Steve, so go ahead and uh, let us know about step two. Pretty important stuff. Ceramic primer polish. In this polish, it acts like a wax. It brings out the color, the shine of the vehicle. Very important. But when we do that, it allows the 100% ceramic, which I'll show you in a few minutes in the bottle this big. Once I put that ceramic on the car, this has become the adhesion process. So the ceramic in, year, in a year, year and a half, years later, it doesn't flake off the paint like a bad sunburn. So it creates an adhesion for the ceramic to grab out of the paint. So now the 100% ceramic will flex with the paint. So I'm from Cleveland cold cold weather many years ago it would flex with 20 uh, minus 20 degrees or the heat here in Florida 95 degrees it flexes with the paint the ceramic doesn't peel off the paint later on and fail you that's a pretty important step in this process ready Here's, good. Here's the last step, the most important step, the ceramic itself. Sponge, observe. Drips, observe. None to it, right? Slowly. Introduce it. Overlap it. The more overlapping, the better. Okay? It'll haze up 10, 20 seconds or so. Okay? Haze it up now. It's curing quicker because we put that ceramic base coat primer polish on. Important step. It helps in the flashing, they call it, the hazing. 
that much quicker. Take your towel, I do a circular pattern, and remove. And that's how you do it properly, especially on a classic like this. Bammo. Now you're starting to see that paint, that shine come out. So we're gonna talk to the proud owner of this beautiful 66 vet. This is Tom. Tom, thanks for allowing us to do this today. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, love the car. And as Thank the sun you. is coming out, that color is starting to pop now. So yes. definitely uh, excited to see how the, the whole process is coming together here. So tell me a little something about, um, first of all, your love for Corvettes, how you came across this car, maybe a little bit of the history of uh, the vehicle if you, if you have sure. that. Yeah, I've always been interested in Corvettes, uh, specifically the C2s, the 63, the 67. Uh, I just remember I was a little kid sitting in the passenger seat with uh, my uncle had a 63. Nice. I couldn't see over the dashboard <laughs> and I always remembered that. I always had that feeling so I always had a love for them and always wanted one. Um, I bought this car. It's a 66 coupe. I bought it in uh, May of last year and uh, it was all original. Um, I bought it off a gentleman who worked at uh, Seymour uh, Air Force Base in North Carolina uh, and he bought it previously from a K-135 uh, pilot who also worked at that Air Force Base. Nice. Um, and it's just something, uh, when I found the car and I saw the Laguna Blue, I love the color. Um, I now you said this color is a one-year only color? It's a one-year only color Laguna Blue. They only made it in 66. Um, so when I picked up the car, I just liked how it was original. Had the original motor, tranny, um, carburetor, everything was all original on it. I wanted to keep it that way and just repaint it and keep it as a driver. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go too crazy and make it too much of a show car. I want to be able to drive it, go right. out to dinner and park it and not worry about it so much. You know? Yeah, and you know, I appreciate that. You know, it's not a trailer queen and these things are meant for driving. You yes. know, a lot of people buy them and they have them sitting up and like, what's the purpose, right? Absolutely. So I like the fact that, you know, you want to drive this and it needs to be seen because this color is beautiful. Absolutely. It's popping. Steve's done a great job as far as, you know, getting the ceramic coating on here done. Uh, I can't wait to see the, the, the end product we're almost there but you know as the sun is coming over the, the hood and over the building man what a color pops, so yeah. I can I can see now um did, how did you actually like come across it? were you searching for one was it Search. specific uh, yeah. you were specific I was looking for a coupe looking for that. I specifically yeah. wanted a coupe just because they didn't make as many right the convertibles are great too but I knew I wanted a coupe mm -hmm. um, searching online I came across this car it was non running in someone's garage mm -hmm. and part of it for me was uh, I, I like the fact that the challenge of taking it with not running and bringing it back right and getting it back so people could see it yeah you know? yeah you want to be invested in it you right. know and you wanted to put your, your stamp on it you want to you know just tweak it a little bit so I like that you, you want to kind of keep it original right. and uh, you know and, and drive it and enjoy it man so Absolutely. you know I really appreciate you allowing us to come out here and film this today um, and, a, and a big part of it for me was Knowing that it's sitting in someone's garage and not running, mm -hmm. saying, all right, if I can get this car back, right. and one day when I don't have it, it's still on the street, you know, and I did my part to keep the Corvettes going, you know, help yeah. out. Yeah. So, Tom, I love the interior. Um, I mean, you got any plans to do anything else to it, or are you going to keep it the same? No, I'm going to keep it the same way. It's original. Uh, uh -huh. Most people think the interior is black. Okay. Until you open the door and a little sunlight gets in there, and you see it's a dark, dark blue interior. It really yeah. looks yeah. black until you look it up close in the light. Yeah, you had me fooled, too. I thought it was black, too. Um, and like I said, the sun is just coming out, so we're going to get some nice photos yeah. of that and, and you know let people see you know really how nice this car is man but i love the coupe man i love the knockoffs on here uh you side know your pipes too, like side it. pipes yeah i mean this thing is is definitely one of a kind man it's a classic man yeah. so i hope you enjoy it and yeah. drive it till the wheels I fall off it. it's, yeah. it's beautiful well, I, I appreciate you guys coming out and doing a feature on it and steve does wonderful work and now having the ceramic coating on it, it's really gonna give it a nice finish so Hopefully yeah. it stays like this for a long time now. Yeah, and no, a lot less effort on your your half to keep it clean, right? Uh, exactly. To keep the Florida bugs off of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys can probably see in the video here it's love bug season, so we got yeah. the bugs coming around. So this is perfect timing for you too. Uh, you know, protect the paint because those those bugs really do affect the paint. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, this is this is awesome, man. You are definitely gonna have to get a start up, a full start of it, and all that yep. good stuff. Absolutely. So again, Tom, thank you so much. Appreciate you coming thank to the, you. Appreciate the Extinct you Legend too. family. Now i got to get you a t-shirt. And thanks and, uh, for keeping that page going. It's a great page. I've been right, working on it. Great. Appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Whenever you're ready.
Beautiful. Extinct Legends, we had a great time out here with Tom and Steve, man. Uh, Tom, thank you for being a great host and allowing us to come to your, your car wash and, and, and uh, feature your car here today. Great story about this uh, unique 66 uh, event. It was beautiful. Uh, it looks even better now. Steve, you did an excellent job, man. Thank it's you. phenomenal. And I just want to thank both of them for allowing Extinct Legends to capture this today. So thank you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. Extinct Legends, that's a wrap. We out. Thank you. Keep up the great page. Hey, thanks. Follow Dwayne. There you go. <laughs>